Hi folks, welcome back to the tutorial. Um, in the last video we left off um, creating the Gabriel Knight dialog script and we left off at step four here. Um, that's the first step four, not the second one. Um, but um, we, we had just started talking about creating uh, a new property or a new custom property for um, our characters. And so I was going to use this video to talk about custom properties and what they are and what they can be used for and what they um, are not and what they can't be used for. So um, basically a custom property is um, any attribute or value that you want to um, associate with a character or an object or a room or a hotspot um, that's not part of the default list of attributes for that, for that object. Uh, for example, if I open up um, my Sammy character here, and I, I look through the, the list of attributes here in the property tree. Um, you know, he has things like adjust volume with scaling, uh, all the different types of views that are associated to the character, what color the character's uh, speech, speech font uh, is, is an attribute, um, whether the character is clickable, um, the character's name, um, things like that are, are all the properties that you can, you can get these properties or set these properties in the, in your, throughout your game. But what if I wanted something like, um, what if Sammy had a nickname, or what if all my characters had a nickname, for example, that I wanted to keep track of? Um, for some reason, you know, I, just just having the name wasn't good enough. Or, or let's say that I had a, um, I wanted to know each character, each object or something in my game had a specific um, origin. For example, you know, where are they from? Where is this character from? Well, these aren't things that are specifically uh, accessible, you know, in the custom prop in the properties here. So we have to create a custom property for those things. If you click on the um, the property, you'll see an ellipses button, uh, and by default it just says properties, and that just means that there's there's a collection of properties that you can't really see in this tree. So to be able to see those properties, you just click the ellipses button, and that'll bring up your uh, edit custom properties dialog box. Now by default there are none because I haven't created any yet, uh, but if there were, I would see the list of custom properties here uh, in this window. Well, let's go ahead and create one by clicking Edit Schema, and this allows me to add uh, a new a new pr custom property. I can right click in this empty window here and say Add New Property. Um, now let's just say I wanted to, to have a new property called Nickname. Uh, description, the nickname of the character. Now this is the, the type, you can have up to three types. Boolean, which we've talked about before, is a true or a false value. You can have a number, or you can have text. Well, in the case of a nickname, we want text, and the default value is, let's just say no nickname, or let's just say none. That means the default value, if I don't set it, is gonna be none for nickname. So I click OK, and now it takes me back to the Edit Property Schema window, and I can see that property listed there. So I'll close that, because I've defined the property that I want. Now, remember that I'm in the custom properties of Sammy. So Sammy's nickname is none right now. Well, let's change it to um, Sam. That's his nickname. Um, so therefore, I've set Sammy's nickname to Sam. Now notice if I close this and go into Donatello now, Donatello has a properties, window, a properties uh, attribute as well. If I click on his properties attribute, he doesn't have a nickname, so his, pro his nickname is none. So I can set his, his nickname to Donnie or something like that. So now, um, now he has a nickname. Now it's not just characters now that share these properties. If I go to the main hall, for example, select my objects, click on this closed door, I can go down to the properties of that closed door. If I click on the, the ellipses button, even it has a nickname. If I wanted to assign a nickname to it. So um, n properties are not... Custom properties are not specific to characters or objects or anything else within the game. Anything can have a custom property. Um, and custom property, the list of custom properties that you can set are all shared uh, throughout AGS. So it's just a handy way of keeping track of something that, that each character or each object should have a different value, but you don't want to have to create a new variable for every, every single character or anything like that. You can keep track of it within the character itself using custom properties. Now, what custom properties are not um, is they're not modifiable within the game. So I can't change a custom property from within the room script. I can, I can see what a custom property is, but I can't change it, meaning it's read-only. Um, for example, if I, wanted, if I had the idea that I wanted to have a health, for example, uh, kind of like um, 
you know, Link within the Legend of Zelda had a, had a certain number of hearts and that once they reached zero, the uh, Link died. If I wanted to have something like that, I could not use a custom property because that's something that has to change within, within the life cycle of the game or while the player is playing the game. I would need to, have to be able to change that value. Um, custom properties don't let you change the value once the game is, is running. So I can set it once within the editor and then from then on it's read only and it's stuck uh, to that value. So you can't use custom properties for those types of things, anything that will require you to, um, to change you know, a value. I might go over, uh, used later I might show you a way to, um, to get around that um, without using custom properties. If you did want to have something that was um, modifiable within, you know, all your characters could have a certain value that was modifiable like health or something like that, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. Um, so let's go back to what we need to do for um, for this next step. It says add the following new property to your characters and populate it for each character with that character's dialogue view that you created in step two. And it wants us to create an, uh, a dialogue view which is an integer or a number and the default value is zero. So let's go and do that now. Um, we've seen how to do that already. Go to the characters Go to the character that you want, go to the properties down at the bottom, click the ellipses. I'll keep nickname there for now just, just because, uh, although you don't need it for this Gabriel Knight style dialogue system. Um, edit schema to add a new one. Right click, add new property. And we're supposed to be creating a dialogue view property, so I'll say dialogue view. Um, description, um, the dialogue, the view for the character when in dialogue. The type is going to be a number and the default value is zero. Click OK and click close. Now this dialogue view here um, is set to zero for Sammy. I'm going to close that because I want to know what was the dialogue view that I created for Sammy. Aha, it's right here. It's number seven. So we go into the properties for Sammy. We change his dialogue view to seven. For Mr. Donatello, I'll go into his custom properties window and I'll change his dialog view to 8 because that's what we created for him. So if I had several characters now, if I had more than just these two, every one of them then, if, if they're able to participate in the dialog, I would go through and change the, the dialog view per, uh, um, property for that character to whatever the view is that I created for that, custom, for that dialog uh, for that character. And the reason I'm doing that um, there is because there's no dialog view um, attribute here for the characters. There's blinking view and idle view, normal view, speech view, and thinking view, but there's no dialogue view. Speech view then would be this, just the view that's normally displayed when the character spe speaks in a room, but, but during dialogue that's going to be a different, uh, different view. So that's what I did there. Um, so we've done that now. We've done the, the, first, the first step four. And then we're going to get into the second step, which will be cr um, creating global variables. Now we've already seen global variables um, in one of the dialogues, I guess in the Monkey Island style dialogue system where we created a dialogue counter global variables. Um, and so for this one we're going to create two more. We're going to have a current dialogue, which is an integer, and a C secondary character, which is a character uh, character pointer. Um, so what we'll do then, we'll go into global variables. Now I'll show you what these are used for later. Let's go into global variables and go ahead and create those two. Go into global variables then, like we did before. I still have this dialogue counter that I created earlier. Right click, add new variable. Um, the first one we wanted to add was current dialog. It's an integer. The default value is zero. Click OK. And then the other one we wanted to create was the C secondary character. I'll copy that. And it's supposed to be a character or a character pointer. So I right click, I add new variable. I'm going to call it C secondary character. I'm going to choose character pointer from the, the list here. The default value now is uh, you can't modify that because you can't set a default value for a character. So I just click OK. OK, so now I've got my two global variables set up there. And that's the second step for finished. So now we go into um, the rest of this, which, which shouldn't be that hard at this point. Um, the, the, the part that's going to be that's going to require something uh, extra then is going to be really this step number nine, which we'll get to um, maybe in the next video or, or perhaps the next one after that. But uh, the rest of these these steps right here for the next couple should be fairly easy. So I'll go over those in the next uh, the next video. 
So uh, join us then, guys.